What is up, Avin Samples YouTube channel? I am Orion Shea. Today, I'll be running through our new sample pack, Tech House Elements. I'll be doing a whole series on this, and I will be doing start to finish song pretty much, or how like I would go about making a song. Today, we're going to be working on a, like a loop for a drop. So this is going to be like a more technical series. Uh, let's let's get into it. First off, I like doing my kicks in MIDI clips just because you can easily route it to like a sidechain plugin or change out the kicks and stuff. I, I don't know. It's just better for me. You can use audio files as well if you prefer working with that. So we're just going to put sample on every downbeat. Actually, we're not going to do that. You're just going to loop it so it's every quarter note. All right, let's go into the Tech House Elements pack and let's find a kick. I think we're going to go with four. I think we're going to do like a higher BPM groove. Let's see here. Change it into one shot mode. Have the velocity and volume match with 100%. So if I want to do like a velocity. If I wanted to do like a velocity thing, it corresponds exactly. I think that I do think it is a little bit long, so I'm gonna turn off snap so I can get in between the cycles and get the perfect length that I want and add a little bit of fade out so it doesn't click. I think right around there should be good. Then we're going to go. Let's add a clap in here. I always like listening to the loop and going through the samples and see what kind of fits the best. Maybe we could layer it as well. Go and group these so I can process them together. I'm going to pick some characteristics I like from the top one here. Really like the body of it, so I'm going to roll off a little high end, cut off the low end. There's a little bit more punchy, and then I think a little bit too much in here. And I really like that redux high end. I think there's a little bit too much space on these. So what I did just there, what I did there was uh, cut off the ends and then just uh, control or command option and F and that will give you a fade on whatever you selected. We'll duplicate that out. I think we're going to do a little compression on these. Love the glue compressor for doing like bus compression. Soft clip it, give it some bite. Let's add a little bit of room to it. Convolution only. Just a little bit of reverb adds so much. Yep. Let's grab a hat. Let's grab a hat. Go and have something short to have the baseline shine through a little bit. I'm liking this one. It's a little too bright though. Yeah. Here in some like mid, low, mid frequencies, I'm not liking too much on the kick. Just a 2 dB reduction around 180 hertz. It's sounding good. Since we got like a basic groove going, I think we should work on a baseline. So we have a whole bunch of serum presets from bases to leads in this pack, which is phenomenal. I'm going to start off with this. It's a very simple bass. So here, let's see if I can write something that I might like. What key is this kicking? Looking like A. Try to find the fundamental of your kick. It can really glue your bass line and everything together just by having something that's in key. Uh, it's easier for the phases to line up as well. Since our kick is in A, then I would do like D minor or D major, depending on what I would feel like. 
Alright. So I have no I don't I don't like this bass line. I do not. Okay. <laughs> so I found a loop that I liked from the sample pack because I did not like what I was writing and I want to write and I want and I wanna get I wanna I wanna and I wanna I wanna, I wanna write a song fast here. Uh, not doing it for me. So went over, tried to find something I liked. I found 25 here. Bass loop 25. I liked it. Wasn't quite doing it for me though. I liked the groove in it. So what I did was I just pitched some notes around and shortened some. So I pitched everything from a F sharp down to a D. So it stays in scale, whatever. Um, and then I didn't like how it like here, uh, it jumped up on these ones. And I also didn't like how it was like how it was stepping up. I just wanted to have like this. Just a... Very, very, very simple. Just two notes. <laughs> so it is clipping. It is clipping pretty damn hard. And what I think that is, is the kick and the sub. Yeah, it's the kick and sub hitting at the same time. So I love this little Max for Live plugin. It's called Duck Buddy. Um, thank you, Slink, for this wonderful, wonderful Max for Live plugin. So what I'm gonna do is take the the output, or I'll take the MIDI from our kick up here, our kick, and it's going to be sent into this little plugin. And what we can do is open this up. Cool. And we can overlay the kick. I'm going to switch this to eight uh, quarter notes. Because we're really on, and we're going to grab it from the kick. So you can hear it's kind of clicking a little bit. You can bump up the ramp and then change the look ahead. Now you don't have that click. So here you can see the phase correlation between the kick. This is why I love this plugin so much, the kick and the bass. It's not looking too bad. A lot of this, like um, the kick and the kick and the, the kick and the sub can kind of double their phase together when they're perfectly in line. So it'll make the amplitude even louder. You can kind of fix that with compression and your mastering. <laughs> it's probably not the correct way, but you can easily just fix that later down the line with super fast attack or super fast um, release and no knee on a multiband just on your low end and it should fix it. So it's not clipping crazy. But I'm not seeing like any huge, I'm not seeing any huge like bow ties or anything. So if I, I think if I like threw a utility on here, you could easily see like a bow tie and invert the phase. Um, you could probably see a bow tie in here. No, is this more in phase? I think this is more in phase. Cool. Also, pro tip, listen to things. With the polarity, with the polarity flipped, sometimes you can the sound will sound better. It's just a little, I don't know. Um, what I think, like if this, if the first hit is pointing up, then that usually means that is good. That's it. Just I think it's something to do with like pushing the air in or pushing the air into your ears. I don't know. 
I think that's kind of how it works. I don't know, but that's kind of that's kind of what I've found. Let's see what this hat's doing. I hear, I hear a little something on this side, a little low end. This is how I would like process hats, pretty much. It's like right here. Yep. It's that one right there. So if I get, tried cutting that out, I'd just like lose too much body. So I'm using a little bell to cut it out. There's with or without it. With. Cleans up the mid-range. Let's hit here to the mix. Oh yeah. Yep. Much cleaner. Sometimes adding a nice reverb to your hats. I use the stock one. Just super, super short. It's very, very faint. Oh, yeah. Very, very subtle. Yeah. This needs more, like, percussion to, like, drive the song through. This can... This is a very good loop for when you want, like, everything just to be empty at the beginning of your song, but it's going to need to evolve over time. I like just having just a loop, adding percussion in, adding like a top loop, adding shaker loops, um, and just giving myself things to take out and add in over time. I like using top loops a lot, honestly. Might be a little cheating, I don't think so. Edit them to make them your own. Just have, just have your own sound with them. That's like the main thing with it. Okay, I don't like this one, but I don't like, I don't like the boom there. Alright, so I'm just going to cut some pieces. There's a little percussion at the end, I'll keep that. I don't want to layer the hat, so I'm going to clip gain under the envelopes tab. So I'm going here, double click it, double click your loop, and then over on the left hand side, if you don't see it, it's probably a drop down. Clip, gain, cool, and then you can just, it's the percentage of what is over here on the gain. Cool, don't want to layer. Duplicate that out. Let's saturate it. Pretty cute. I might actually grab another hat and add that in to replace the one that we're cutting out. Turn this, turn it down. And I added a little bit of swing to this over on the right hand side if you don't see it. Click the D. And then that's delaying each track. You can uh, select the delay because in this original one, there is a little groove. So we can even highlight and get the exact groove number. 18, 19, perfect. We can dead on the money pretty much. So this accent hat right here, it's kind of off to the left hand side of just, just a teeny bit. So I'm gonna have the other accent hat off to the right. I think I'm also going to take this side chain and put it on here, but shorten it. Cool. This bass is not popping. I mean, it's popping, but I think I'm going to kind of group process this. So I'm going to group this serum and I'm going to duplicate the chain. So 
So what I did was I added a, I, I really wish I could show, but you know, I'm gonna just take a screenshot of this. Cool. I'm gonna just overlay it. Um, so uh, I added another filter and chain and remove the second oscillator and just had a saw wave going through. There we go. Very simple. Top layer. Process the two together. There is a little too much low end in this. I think a little bit too much highs. There we go. All right, let's look at the volume relationship. I try to strive for negative six, if not negative four in the low end on the sub and kick. This is still pre-mastering. I just try to like get the levels sitting close to each other. So you see our sub down here. It's in that negative 12-ish. And then our kick's hitting that negative six. I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. The bass is just feeling a little too much dead on the grid to me. So what you could do is manually swing everything, but that's that can be a pain sometimes. Um, so what I'm gonna do is add a groove to it. Ableton has a whole bunch of stock and swings. So what you can do is go over to the grooves. And I really like the logic swing on the 16th note. Um, I tend to go for something higher where you can really tell the difference and then dial it back. See, this could be... This could work in some cases. In our case, it's not. Just swung a little bit. The 16th notes are a little bit more swung. So this note, this note, this note, this note, and yeah. Those are the notes that are going to be swung because it's a 16th, oh, and this one. So these are the notes that are going to be swung because it's a 16th note swing on here. All depends on the style that you're going for. A lot of times in Tech House, it is the 16th note swing. Um, Logic swing's great, or MPC swing is also very good on the 16th one as well. Let's try that. We can switch in between the two. We can go here. Over on the left-hand side, you can drop down, you have swings. Can switch between the two, see which one we like. I think Swing MPC has a little bit more character. Let's go ahead and add in. Let's see here. We got so many freaking percussions to search through. Once again, I'm just nudging it off the grid a little bit over on the right hand side here with the delay. I'm trying to line it up with our swung in bass line. What you could also do is select it, consolidate it, and then add in the swing that we have into the groove sections. So you can add swings to audio clips and MIDI clips, so that is very cool. Cool. Just pushing it off the center. And it over to the left just a little bit. Just having that come in occasionally. We could even add in like a... Let's start in a little effect on the downbeat here. Let's start with spectral time because we're very, very sick. Um, dotted. Modified this so it goes time fast as possible. Yeah. Now I'm just going to nudge. I love using this little nudge here. It can get it out of phase, but it works sometimes. 
And it's t and it sounds fine. Yeah. Cool. Let's add in another perk in here. I'll add Ozone Imager 2. If you don't have this plugin, it is free. Go download it from Ozone. Um, if you're stuck doing the Haas effect, you know, the Haas effect, it does not sound great if you're using a Haas effect. Please stop using it. Things get out of phase. So Haas effect is just turning up a delay from, or turning, delaying one side more than the other side gives fake stereo. Um, so you hear the right or left side first, the right side. Um, basically, it sounds like something's moving across like that. Cool, sounds okay. Sounds okay in stereo. As soon as you turn it into mono. In most cases, when you start using house effect, um, you get phasing when you put it in center, uh, put it in mono. Don't really want that ever. And it just sounds gross. You get weird notches going running up and down. Don't want that. Sometimes you do actually, I'm sorry. Um, but ozone imager, great. I cannot pull it over. Thank you, Mac OS. But you get two modes. Um, you can turn on stereo, stereo eyes, and then turn up the width. I love number two just sounds more organic um, very center maybe a little bit something late on the right hand side amazing little plugin just adding subtle variations from like our baseline is pretty much a one bar loop getting played over and over again um, just adding subtle variations with the percussion throughout like even just four bars can add so much extra and having it instead of just having it be so repetitive. Still iffy on this one here. We could even like reverse it. Sounds cool. I'm not too sure on I like the placement of these. We can even can just turn those off for now. Figure it out. Let's grab maybe a little 909 snare. It could sound good. Very, very tight. Just missing some high end. Maybe we could throw a little bit of erosion on it. Maybe that will sound nice. Maybe even a little bit of redux. Yeah. Here's the sound without it. Just adding a little subtle high end into it. It's a little ringy. It needs more hit to it. Um, let's see here. We could do transients shaping enhance. Great, great drum bus preset. Thank you, Alec Ripple, for showing me this one. Adding some low end, don't want that. Just a little bit more punch to it. It's also adding some gain into it. So let's take the gain down. Level match him. That's close enough. Not really, but it's close enough. What's it gonna do it on here? Oh, that's punchy now. We're well, not punchy, but just dirty. Sounds good. Oh, so flimsy. Oh yeah. Oh. Cool. Anything else I need to do on this? Oh. Oh yeah. We can add a little little one of these. The one of these 
I don't know why it warps out of time. This is 125. Yeah, that's sounding pretty good. Uh, what else do I need here? A lot of people start off with a super short hat and then start layering them as the songs go on. Um, we can even do that here. We can duplicate this out to a full 16 bars. Cool. Maybe go like this. A lot of times in this first like eight bars of the drop, it's, like, it's very, very short. Maybe this is a little bit too short, but you get the idea. Um, it's very just empty almost. And then as the song goes on, it starts building up and you end up with a big, massive ride even like 909 Ride is a great cl classic example. I think this one will fit better. This might sound like doo-doo. It might sound cool. Um, I'm not also sidechain the ride. Pro tip, sidechain your ride just adds a nice ducking effect to it. Not drastically, but just subtly. And then a lot of times it's like this. Faint off in the background and you could even throw an auto filter on it. And have it just pan around slowly throughout the drop. That's, the, that, that's an idea. I might keep it in there. Um, and then tweak it later in later episodes. Um, probably in the structure episode, I'll go through structuring out the whole drop and everything in it and the whole song pretty much. And while you listen to it through, um, try to add variation so you don't get bored of it and just bored in general of the song. Um, work fast, work different, just try new things, set a timer and try to write a song in 15 minutes, see what happens, um, push yourself, see a new effects, put it on something random, you know? It's all about trial and error pretty much, just fucking write a song. <laughs> it's house music, it doesn't have to be crazy. Hope you guys enjoyed, this was my first tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.